Hello everyone. Um, we haven't seen each other on this channel for a long time because honestly I was busy with all the things in Somnium and VR1 and we are preparing for Somnium Connect which will announce the exact dates of Somnium Connect and orders very soon. The production has started in the factory, those who followed us have seen, but today I don't want to speak about that. As you know, I'm a big fan of, um, of Apple Vision Pro, of this great device. And there's a couple of things I wanted to discuss. Uh, first of all, there's a huge event, Apple event, WWDC, the Worldwide Developer Conference of Apple, which is coming on Monday, June 10th. And it's gonna be a lot of changes happening on that conference. So I want to discuss this, but I also wanted to discuss what has changed since the Apple Vision Pro launch and how did my habit of of using the device changed? What are the goods and the bads of the device? Uh, because I literally have, I don't know, hundreds of hours um, in that headset, probably more. And uh, I have a lot of things to say in the next iterations of software and hardware. So let's start with uh, with Apple Vision Pro. What do I, do I still use it? Yes, I do. Um, how often do I use it? I use it almost every day. Um, now, there are several factors. Again, I was super busy with other stuff and just had to concentrate on, on, on many more things. But I still use it for work. I still use it for you know working and replying on my mails, having some calls, uh, having my virtual space around me, um, mainly at home in the evenings. Uh, but I also use it a lot for media consumption, right? And that's... Uh, that 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 is still awesome. Now, would I wish that Apple has released more of immersive content because the trailers they're showing to us that there's a new trailer out there. If you didn't see it, go and watch it. These are amazing experiences. Sports will be revolutionized. We know it. Um, you know, nature and 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 everything else. It's just gonna be epic. And from those trailers, I get goosebumps. So if you didn't watch it, go watch the trailer. And it's going to be, yeah, it, it, it's, it's all going to be great. I hope on the WWDC, in, on the 10th of June, Apple will announce more rigid plan of how they're going to release this content because there's nothing like this out there. Yes, I know many people say, did you watch this on Quest 3? Yes, I did. But the way how Apple does it and the quality they provided to you and the quality of the screen and everything else is just, you know, mind-blowing for the content. You feel like you're there. Literally, you do. Um, so that's awesome. Now, what do I like? What do I wish for for Vision OS 2.0? Mm, listen, I wish to have more profiles so that I can log in easily other people or let other people to log in with their ID um, and have their profiles there. Because you know, if I want to give someone the guest mode, always going through eye tracking iterations, just you know, just takes more time and it's not fun. Um, I wish they will streamline more apps, native apps from uh, from Apple, and I also wish there will be more um, there will be more hints on how this platform will evolve into the, into the future uh, with potentially other um, other apps uh, coming uh, coming out and other ways and devices coming out as well based on Vision OS. Now, <clears throat> better life was great. Um, ergonomics to me, this strap, which everybody or not everybody, but a lot of people say is uncomfortable, not a problem at all. Very comfortable to me. You just need to kind of learn how to wear it for you. Like it needs to fit you. You need to find that spot. And the moment you find it, it's pretty much no, no brainer. And, uh, there's nothing wrong with that strap. I literally, apart from testing in the beginning, I never used any other strap than this on, on those devices with hundreds and hundreds of hours of usage. So, so it gives you an answer whether it's comfortable or not comfortable. Um, now, what is, uh, what is with WWDC? What do I expect from that? I honestly think that, um, you know, we'll see a lot of things in Vision OS. We'll see a lot of connections. I hope a lot of AI features will come up to Vision OS um, because, you know, when you have visual device, being able to generate something on the go or some assistant, whether it's voice assistant, that's where it makes a lot of sense. Because if you have a voice assistant and you just you don't want to type in digitally, 
um, in Vision OS, you can just say and it will do things. That's awesome. Um, so I think that that will be coming in. Um, I also think that there is a big debate that um, or rumor that OpenAI has partnered with Apple or Apple has partnered with OpenAI to bring AI to iPhone. I don't know whether I can imagine this happening given how much privacy centric Apple is. And I just cannot imagine any hardware software constellation where Apple will allow OpenAI anywhere close to the user data. That's number one. And number two, where Apple cannot deliver what OpenAI has, uh, what OpenAI has right now, if we're talking about their own device AI. I think Apple has the capability. They have bought probably 50 startups. The most startups have uh, in AI uh, which have been bought were bought by Apple in the last two years. So that gives you something. And I just don't think Apple will give a spotlight to OpenAI that much. I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, let's see. We'll find out on Monday. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they will do it by, their, by themselves, on device, very secure, and that's why we love Apple. Now, um, so AI on Vision Ads, AI on phones and other, other devices, probably even Apple Watch. I'm sure they will, they will bring it. Now... Will we see any updated hardware for for Vision Pro or Vision OS? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it will be still the same uh, hardware. They will not release any hardware there. Um, how do I how do I see this device going forward? I use it. I when I think about Vision Pro, I never think about games. Like no, it not at all. This is a productivity and entertainment device. And when I say entertainment, it's more most of most of it is our media. Movies are has been have been great. 3D movies. I watched some movies which I never watched, or I rewatched some movies which I already did in 3D, like Ready Player One. And it felt like I'm watching the new movie. Literally did. I saw things which I didn't even see in when I was watching Ready Player One. And I saw it that movie like three or four times beforehand. So that's incredible. Uh, the immersive content, incredible. Um, just consuming content, like watching ice hockey and stuff, not in immersive way, but even in a huge screen in 2D, incredible. So overall, I think they need to double down on the content there. Um, they need to bring more immersive uh, experiences and environments into the play. They, will, they need to make sure that we can customize those environments. Um, so shout out to Beautiful Things app. Um, where they do some great stuff. We can just put 3D models uh, there. Soon, authenticity is coming out. There will be some ability to put 3D models in, apart from other stuff. So there's there's quite a bit of things you can do. But again, this is a productivity device. And I really, really hope they will double down on that. They will allow iPhone coming into the Vision OS, so I don't need to kind of uh, look at it through pass-through. Now, things I like and I don't like about hardware of Vision OS. I like the form factor. I like the ergonomics. I like the the visuals. But now on the visual part, here's where some things come and a little bit fall apart on one side, but excel on the other side. Now, the crispness of the text and the way how Vision OS is designed is amazing. And that's a combination. It's not about just having a 4K display. Um, it's about having the right fonts and the of the right size of the right colors on the, at, at the right distance from your eyes. That's what Apple has nailed with their OS and great. And I think they will improve it. Amazing. Now on the contrary side, is there chromatic aberration? There's a lot of it. If I look on the outskirts of a limited 100 degrees FOV, if I look on outskirts, there's a lot of color shifts um, to yellow, greenish, uh, maybe even reddish. And there's a lot of chromatic aberration. So if I watch for it, I definitely see it. That's quite a lot um does it bother me in the content while i'm in the movie no but if you look if you try to look in the virtual office and you look like this yes then then you kind of start seeing it um ghosting um the glare and ghosting things that's that's where it really bothers me because because in the dark scenes in the movies when you have a bright part and then the dark movie theater you have a lot of ghosting. That is the problem of pancake lenses. And of course, for that, there is next generation of pancake lenses needs to be developed. I'm sure Apple is developing these kind of lenses um, like Hypervision does. And I know from the Hypervision uh, uh, prototypes, I know that uh, it's possible to get rid of them or minimize them. Uh, but, you know, it needs a lot of 
hardcore tech development and Apple, uh, it will take them probably um, a year or two to, to, to do something like that. Now, for, from other than that, I mean, I would like to have a higher, bigger FOV, obviously. I don't think it's going to happen in the near future for Apple Vision Pro unless they swap the screens, unless they go from micro OLED to, um, you know, fast, fast LCD, so QLED dis displays, because micro LEDs are super small and you cannot maximize the FOV having that size of the chip uh, of, the, of the screen. Um, it's just impossible. Uh, you can stretch it a bit, you know, maybe with 1.1-ish inch uh, 4K displays, you can kind of stretch it to 110 degrees with kind of a little bit of hope and uh, and, and luck. But uh, again, you will see some color shiftings, you will see some stuff. So I don't think we're going to see huge FOV improvement. Uh, the pass-through, the pass-through is great for everyday use. Now for this office style stuff where I have windows in my room, looks great. The moment you are trying to read monitor, for example, or screen of the phone, I have problems um, with the pass-through to uh, to focus on that. And I think that was the one of the things. But if they bring the phone, like they brought the, 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 uh, the watch or uh, Mac, uh, if they bring those devices natively in, in, into the uh, Vision OS, then I have no complaints at all. Now, overall, am I the fan of Vision Pro? For sure, because this is a revolutionary device. It still feels revolutionary. Shout out to Thrillseeker for the tweets they did and Brad. Every time I take any other device, even VR1, okay, after using Vision Pro, I want to do the gestures. And thank God VR1 has hand tracking, but I want to do gestures. You know, I want to look at, at somewhere and just pinch and do this. This is so revolutionary. It's so easy to use. I see it on the people I demo Vision Pro to. People who had problems with, you know, controllers and Quest 3s and 2s and stuff, they instantly get it. It takes them, whether it's kids or older people, it gets, it, it, it takes them 15 seconds to figure it out. And then they're all in it, they can control it, they understand it, easy, super, great, well done Apple, build on top of that and just do it. So I'm a huge fan of Vision Pro, still using it. Um, I, the, the downsides which I mentioned, I also mentioned in the beginning of my review, they didn't bother me at all. Like they also improved quite a bit of things, on pass-through, on the personas, and spatial personas. Oh my God, spatial personas are amazing. I had a one and a half hour call with my friend with spatial personas. He was, I felt like he was with me in my kitchen. This was incredible. And we're watching movies together. We were drawing on the board. We were reading the news on the websites. Damn it, that's, that's well done. This is incredible and well done. If they build on top of that and they will improve it more, Jesus Christ, that's going to be a revolution. It's already revolutionary. It's going to be even more revolutionary. So, so on, that, on that front, Apple is ahead, light years ahead of anyone else. Um, and I think, yeah, they just, they just managed to show the way to all other companies who have been in this business um, for, uh, for a long time. It's just incredible. Um, so they're well done. Again, I expect quite a bit of updates and refinements for the Vision uh, Pro. Uh, operating system in WWDC. I expect that we'll see AI. I expect we'll see profiles. I expect we'll see more apps. I'll, I'll, I expect we'll see some uh, some of the you know smallish things, maybe languages coming, more keyboard languages, things like this. Those things which are you know great and help a lot in the productivity and in day to day use. And that will make this device even more even even better. So overall. Looking forward to next Vision OS 2.0. Huge fan of Vision OS and Vision Pro. Yes, it's expensive, but it's going to be cheaper later. And it's definitely worth every dollar if you have the money. Um, it's better than anything out there for sure. Uh, you can, of course, you can do some things in Quest 3 which you can do in Vision Pro, but it's like with cars. You can. You listen, you can uh, you drive uh, on Škoda Fabia from A to B uh, the same way as you drive in a Bentley. Uh, and I'm not even a huge fan of Bentley, but like, you know, it's the same car, basically. It's four wheels and engine and it does something. It moves forward when you tell it to. But the differences are in nuances. And I think that's the Bentley of, uh, 
you know, of XR industry and uh, Quest is the Skoda Fabia, which is totally, you know, legit car for its own users. And uh, I think for, uh, you know, if you want to gain, you go to Quest. Uh, but if you want to, if you want to, oh, let me, let me rephrase. If you want to game quick and cheap, you go to Quest. If you want true immersion and level of details, which you have never seen before, you go to PC VR with a beefy computer and you will just squeeze the last bits of, of the computer into the best VR headsets out there. Shout out VR one. Um, and you will get the best visuals with the highest field of view clarity and no ghosting and stuff. And if you want a total productivity device with unmatched capabilities, and amazing content of immersive or of immersive experiences, you go to Vision OS. That's, and if you're an Apple ecosystem, no brainer at all. But even if you're not, this device is for you and it will make you to go to Apple ecosystem and Apple exactly knows what they're doing. So these are my unfiltered thoughts. I never prepare any thoughts. Probably it will look, it looks like this a uh, long rant, but I just wanted to say hi after a long period. We'll, we'll be bringing pixel slaves back. Um, uh, we'll also do a live episode of Pixel Slaves on stage at Somnium Connect. So stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, um, the June and July will be epic, uh, both in terms of Somnium and in terms of uh, Apple. And I hope to see you soon on this channel and we'll, uh, we'll continue this great journey. And stay in XR, my friends. Bye-bye!